Disclaimer, this video was intended for an adult audience only. Viewer discretion is advised. Anything you see in this video, do not attempt to recreate. This video was created for documentation purposes only. Our purpose is education. We are not justifying or glamorizing using substances. What we are doing is educating people on the substances that we have used and what it has done for us. Do not recreate or do not redo the substances we have done just because we talk about it. Blue Water Lily, The Forgotten Entheogen. In this documentary, what I'm going to be going over is the Blue Water Lily. Most people know it as Blue Lotus. The lotus flowers are, are in the Nalumbo family, and the lilies are in the Nymphaceae family. Based on looks, the lotus flower and the lilies are very similar, but they do have key differences. The lotus flowers seem to have wider and more rounded flower petals, where the water lily seems to have more narrow and pointed flower petals. Also, on a molecular level, these plants are very similar, but yet also very different. It seems like the lotus flowers and the lily flowers have had a bigger impact in our history than we realize. So let's get into it. Most people know me as Mark. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a self-taught psychonaut. Someone who loves to dive deep within the mind, who loves to learn about new plants, new psychoactive molecules. My main interests though are entheogens, plants that were used by ancient cultures and ancient civilizations. I love a plant that has a lot of history, a plant that has a story behind it. Cultures have used it. It's shaped and molded societies. Those are the type of plants that I'm into. And that is what I see in the blue water lily. What is the blue water lily? The true blue water lily is Nymphia cerulea. It's a water lily found growing in the pools, dams, swamps, ponds, streams, and rivers of Africa. Nymphia carula and Nymphia lotus are the lilies from Africa, but there are about 40 different species of water lilies. The water lilies are part of the Nymphaceae family, which is a very primitive plant family. Fossil evidence suggests that Nymphias haven't changed much over the past 160 million years. The term Nymphia comes from a Greek word which Theophrastus, who was a disciple of Plato and Aristotle, would describe these plants as nymphs, which meant the protectors of the streams and ponds. These plants have their roots grounded in a lot of ancient cultures. The lilies and the lotus flowers have been admired for thousands of years. The goddess Isis is said to have pointed out that the rhizomes were edible. In Egypt, the flowers can be seen on ancient monuments, murals, pottery, and furniture. This flower seemed to have multiple benefits to the Egyptians. Whether it was used as an aphrodisiac, whether it was used as a party drug mixed with wine, or an entheogen to expand the mind. This plant was so important to the Egyptians that they dedicated the protection of this plant to the god Nefertim. During ancient times, the plant was widely cultivated in temple lakes and along the Nile, then exported throughout the Mediterranean. This flower was revered in Greece as early as 550 BC. At the time, the religion of Isis was just newly formed and they began to reintroduce a blue lotus sacrament. So these flowers influenced Greece, they influenced Egypt, and I also think they influenced India, Hinduism, Buddhism, and all the other religions that came out of that area at the time. For Hindus, the lotus flower is a symbol of purity and enlightenment. It is the essence of human nature. Lotus symbols are meant to represent life 
new beginnings, and the possibility of people growing to change into something beautiful. A lot of people know about the Egyptians and the water lilies and the lotus flowers, but not too many people really talk about how Hinduism uses the lotus flower as representation, it uses it basically as a metaphor. What they say is that the lotus flower represents growing out of the muck, growing out of the mud and become a beautiful flower. Lotus for me, like really makes me want to meditate. Like the main thing I really want to do when I'm just on the lotuses is meditate. The difference, but the difference between the lily and the lotus is the lily doesn't necessarily make me want to meditate. It more gives me a little more energy and like um, social, you know, it's a social thing. Um, and it's very psychoactive and like a hypnotic, psychedelic-ish type thing. Um, that's why I can see it being a sacrament easily. I can see that, you know, the Hindus would probably use that as their sacrament and then you know, somebody somewhere was like, yeah, no more taking this. We're just going to use it as a symbol. Or it's quite possible that the ancient drink Soma was made with a lotus flower. This is just what I feel. But what I honestly think and genuinely believe is that at one point in the history of India, the lotus flowers were being consumed. After doing research, it seems like India, just like China, uses lotus seeds. But India tends to use lotus seeds more in a dry form, eating them basically like nuts. Where China seems to know a little bit about the medicinal benefits of it and uses it in the Chinese medicines. The alkaloids. Even though the Nymphaceae family and the Nalumbo family are different plant families, they both contain aporphine alkaloids. The two species do have slightly different effects from each other, which would suggest that they are slightly different on a chemical perspective. More scientific research and analysis needs to be done in order to figure out what exactly the differences are. Researching the molecules is probably my favorite part out of this whole documentary. Next to actually taking the Blue Lotus Sacrament. I love to research molecules and what they do to the body and the different receptors they attach to and how the smallest little difference on an alkaloid can make it attach to a completely different receptor. And with different receptors, you get completely different effects. Aporphine and Nuciferian are the two main alkaloids found in the water lily and the lotus flower. Nuciferian seems to be an antagonist at 5-HT2A, 5-HT2C, and 5-HT2B. An inverse agonist at 5-HT7, a partial agonist at D2, D5, and 5-HT6, an agonist at 5-HT1A, and D4 receptors. I know this sounds like a bunch of gibberish to most people. D1, 5-HT, numbers and letters. But what's being said is that Nuciferian seems to act mostly on dopamine with serotonin action, but mostly as an antagonist. Nuciferian is the molecule that I found the most research on. It's most likely the molecule that they've done the most research on. But the one that seems more interesting to me is a porphine and possibly other aporphine alkaloids, but I want to talk about aporphine. Because what I found about aporphine is that it works on D1 and D2 receptors, 5-HT2A and 5-HT7 receptors. Now it probably works on more receptors than this, but this is all I could find on it. As I was doing research on the blue water lily, I came across a video on YouTube by Arisha Dean. She was talking about the blue water lily in a very interesting way. And something she said about a porphine that blew my mind. So I'm gonna play you a clip from her video. Current research, the last six months, a group of international uh, researchers, and I'm one of them, uh, have been experimenting with blue lotus and psilocybin. Fascinating results. As you know, psilocybin is almost exactly uh, the same as serotonin. All right. 
Psilocybin operates on one neuroreceptor. The 5-HT2A neuroreceptor is the one that, that psilocybin goes after. LSD does, DMT. They all go after this one neuroreceptor. And uh, so there's a lot of research being done. All of this is cutting edge stuff, most of it in just the last six years. The ancients knew something that we're just now beginning to discover. So check this out. The two main ingredients of blue lotus is a porphine and nucephrine. A porphine works on serotonin and this particular neuroreceptor, the same one that psilocybin does. The nucephrine works on the dopamine receptors. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to talk about this one in particular. A porphine does a very interesting thing to DNA. The DNA of the receptor gets altered by the porphine, and it links in to uh, the DNA by slipping into the gaps in between uh, the empty space of the DNA. So um, this is the complicated uh, biochemistry of it. I'll just say that the center picture there is that the uh, porphine is sliding in and in calculating the DNA, and the psilocybin binds on the edge. They bind in two different locations. So what I feel like this means is that a porphine has played a bigger role in our human evolution than we could have ever imagined. What I'm suggesting is that I feel like this is just like Terence McKenna's stone dape theory. I feel like a porphine has the capability to alter our DNA, therefore it could have sparked something in the human psyche. I mean look at what happened to Athens. I'm not saying a porphine is to blame for all the philosophy that came out of Athens, but what I am saying is it's quite possible that some of the philosophers were using these flowers more than just for food. And even if you were only using it for food, it's still quite possible that the alkaloids inside of the seeds could still affect you in a similar way. A lot of people talk about how they can't get the lotus flower to work for them. They try smoking it, they try making a tea with it, but honestly what I feel like the issue is is I feel like it's the method of ingestion. If I do make tea with it, I usually brew it with a top on for about two to three hours, usually with something acidic or with an oil. I've also tried resin extracts of the water lily and it seems like they're missing something. They can't get me where I was with this extract. This is Blue Lotus Live Freeze-Dried Extract. All that Lotus Extract at the top. Not all the way dissolved, but whatever. I'm gonna drink this extract. 30 minutes later, I'm gonna smoke some cannabis, but about an hour later, hour and a half, I might redose. We'll go, we'll see how things go. Um, but yeah, I got my bowl of cannabis already packed over there because the 30 minute mark for me is key. Like timing is key when it comes to synergy. If I time it right, the cannabis will bring out the more benefits of the lotus flower and vice versa. The lotus flower will bring out more benefits of the cannabis and they'll synergize together um, and boost each other. 805.
set up a new thing. <clears throat> I do have more. If we need to read those, I will. If we need to those enough, I will. I want to get as much as I can get out of this experience. I feel like cannabis is the great potentiator. I feel like cannabis has been there with me through almost every experience. Almost, I can say every single psychedelic experience besides one psychedelic experience. But cannabis has been right there with me throughout the whole thing. And I think for me, a lot of people talk about how they can't mix cannabis with psychedelics. Like I said, I can't imagine what it would be like to not mix cannabis with other psychedelics. <clears throat> On this blue water lily experience, right now I'm starting to reach the peak. And honestly, so I, honestly, so my stomach started hurting and I had to go take a shit. And now I was sitting there thinking and as I was sitting there thinking, I could tell that it was starting to kick in. My mind is starting to expand, but yet it's starting to get harder to communicate it with you guys. Um, now, I wouldn't call this being in the isness or being, or I wouldn't say that it's making me feel like I'm becoming one with everything or everyone or that uh, or whatever. But my perspective on things have cha has changed. It's become more of a psychedelic perspective on the world around me and reality. The first thing I noticed was music. As I was listening to, to the music, I started to notice that I could... I, I was starting to be able to hear the individual instruments throughout the song. I wasn't listening to the song. Like, it was like I'm, I'm no longer listening to the song anymore. I'm like listening to every single part of the song individually like I could pick it out individually every single part of the music um so after the first cup I drank I made another cup okay and I drank that and then after that one I made this one and I drank about 25 percent of this one I'm trying I was trying to <laughs> I'm just trying to push to see how far it can take me um and then go from there. I don't think that it's gonna get much more than this though. So I might take that last little bit of the shot. I like to look around. When I take these things, I like to look around. I like to look at the ceiling, look at the walls. Nothing's moving. At least I, I mean, nothing's moving like a psychedelic experience, like the typical, like the walls are breathing thing. Like that's not happening. But the perception of... Uh, man, it's always hard to pin down what's happening. The perception of of the way things look different. They look different. That's all I can say. Everything looks different. Looks like I'm looking at... I'm looking at the same... I'm in the same room. But it's almost like... I don't know. I'm... I could focus more on things. I, I pick out more things in the room. It's almost like I can notice everything in the room. Um, that doesn't make much sense. But that's what it is very much like a uh, like explaining a psychedelic experience. As weird as that sounds, it's very much like trying to like if you were tripping, trying to explain what's happening to you. It's very much like that right now because I feel like. It's hard for me to even talk right now. It's hard for me to talk this out in a nice, coherent way for people to understand. I could think deeper, though, I feel like. Like, I'm, I'm thinking expansion. Like, I'm trying to... Almost like my body wants to let go. Like, I'm almost like... I don't know. It's hard to explain. But I feel good, though, too. I feel like I could make it go either way. Um, if there was a bunch of people in here and we all took Lotus together like this, I feel like I'd be able to... Sit, I'd be sitting here vibing, like, I wouldn't be necessarily energized, like, I couldn't sit and get up and, and like, start, I don't know, um, but... At this point, yeah, like, I've consumed about 1.5 to 2.5 grams want. of this extract. Like, I don't want to get up and do that. I just want to vibe 
This feeling's nice. Um, yeah, I'll update you guys. It's it's about the four. It's the forty-five minute mark. So yeah, this is forty-five minutes in. So I was gonna go, but that just blew my mind. As soon as I played the music. It was like this orgasmic feeling just rushing through my body. Like, music definitely adds to the feeling. Um, uh, it's just, you want, it's just beautiful. You know, it's like, a, like I said, in the beginning, the first thing I noticed was the, the individual sounds of the music. Now it's like, they're more present, and it's like I could feel them almost. Like, it's hard, it's not just, I'm not just hearing them, I can feel them. Um... It's it's just it's crazy, yeah. I take that back when I say it wasn't gonna get any stronger. <laughs> I take that back. So just hit me like a ton of fucking bricks, and um, it's like when you're on the come up of a psychedelic experience and it starts to get intense and shit, and it's like. It's going to be intense until it levels off, you know what I mean? But because I've been sipping it, it probably won't level off for a little bit, so... Yeah, I'm in for a ride. But Spangle is, is a fucking... Spangle are gods from, from heaven sent down to make music, especially for situations like this. When you're on a come up, turn on some Spangle and get spangled the fuck out. I have this passion for expanding my consciousness and mind. I love... I love molecules, but on a deeper level, I love what they... I love what certain alkaloids do, and I love that I can literally expand my consciousness and awareness to a higher level, depending on what molecule I use, and it's not even just a, on a higher level, there are many different aspects. If you were to, I feel like if you consider weed a minor psychedelic, blue water lily is more psychedelic than weed, but not as psychedelic as LSD. This is the strongest blue water lily extract. I didn't realize I it at the had, time. The I was actually on the come up, and the actual unless peak I start was getting, about to hit. Unless I try to get pure, you know, a porphine alkaloids. I think a porphine and the a porphine and the other a porphine like alkaloids, I feel like they have more of a potential uh, to be psychedelic. But this is my life, right? This is who I am. I love to I just I just love to explore. Explore. That's that's what I love to do the best. I love to explore the mind. So as the come up came, the come up about the 50 minute mark, about 50 minutes in, 55 minutes in, I got this intent, the intensity started to rise, it started to rise, it started to rise, and it was to the point where I couldn't avoid it, and it hit that point where it was like, you either fight it or you let go to it, and I let go to it, like even right now, thinking about all this shit, right, it's kind of making me emotional, like, I don't know, it's almost like, the beauty of reality, the fact that humans are able to do things like this, the fact that we can begin to touch that higher aspect of ourself. And I feel like Blue Water Lily is almost like that beginning stages of touching the isness, the beginning stages, where it allows you to touch the zenness, it allows you to touch be in tune with your emotions it allows you to be more in tune with yourself and question yourself question who you are what are you scared of like literally while the come up was coming up it like <clears throat> it made me face my fear of like i was thinking to myself what am i scared of why is this feeling to me bringing on fear instead of beauty or acceptance and that's what it made me realize, that it's like you have to accept it. You just have to 
accept and within the metaphor in it is like you have to accept reality things are going to happen to you in your life you know and uh yeah and that's probably why maybe that's probably why i'm getting emotional one of my best friends is no longer my best friend so it's like thinking about that now in this state of mind does make me teary-eyed it does make me feel that lump in the throat you know what i mean like everyone knows what you know, knows what i mean but like a lot more and a lot stronger i feel my emotions much more right now i kept saying that it was like a psychedelic really i guess what i was trying to say is that it had psychedelic like effects and dissociative like effects it also had empathogen like effects it could be like an empathogen as well like uh, psychedelicish empathogenic like type thing I don't know it's more than just a hypnotic it's more than just something that gets you uh, relaxed like it's deeper than that it feels great to just lay down and roll as funny as that sounds fuck yeah moments like this are moments where you wish they never ended but you know that everything comes to an end. One of the shitty part is, guys, every time I make a video, it takes me out of it a little bit, but I'll do that for you guys. Because um, I can always have another Lotus experience whenever, you know. But what I just noticed is I could definitely see why it would be used as a party thing, too. Like, so... I... So it was starting, I don't know, it's just unpredictable. Like one minute I want to, one minute I just want to lay down and roll on, on, on the ground and just, it feels good to kind of just lay down and roll and your eyes close and vibe to the music. But then the next second I just want to get up and kind of move and it feels good to vibe and dance to the music. And like, I, I don't know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Within one second I want to just sit here and meditate with my eyes closed and, and whatever. And the next second I just... Uh, I'm deep thinking about some other shit and then the next set it's very uh all over the place it's interesting um just figured I'd make that little uh note real quick so I'm basically on the come down um it's 11 11 well just turned 11 12 um now if I didn't keep redosing I would have technically came down at like 10 um but i kept redosing and kept redosing and i don't know if i showed you guys the bag before now all that's left is a little bit at the bottom um but <sighs> it's been a ride right like it's interesting because the lotus flower it, it is almost like it comes not necessarily in waves because shrooms and ayahuasca and LSD and like a lot of them, they all, they all come in waves, right? And this kind of came in waves as well. It's just, it came in waves of me wanting to relax, to me wanting to get up and, you know, dance, to me wanting to lay down, to me wanting to roll around and feel like, uh, my mind was all over the place at one point now it's nice and calm and and silent like and and it's just hard to explain but i but i just it, it's just very interesting it's very interesting blue water lily is very interesting i definitely feel this sense of zenness i remember there was moments where the music would stop and it'd be silent like this and there's so much beauty in the silence. It's absolutely amazing. <sighs> but thank you guys so much for watching. This has been my little uh, documentary, um, The Blue Water Lily. And I really appreciate you guys coming here and joining me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone.